Intel made Meteor Lake better, Sony's not getting rid of your TV shows, and you want to upgrade all of your FPS? Here's one simple trick how to do it. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. It's Tuesday, December 26, 2023, and we're going to start off today talking about Intel's latest laptops, Meteor Lake, which launched just under two weeks ago on December 14th. And what we're finding is that they shipped with an improper BIOS. It looked like that the power draw was actually experiencing an issue underneath Meteor Lake, even though it was putting up actually pretty good competitive numbers compared to AMD and Apple, it looks like there's even more to get out of it. So Intel published a BIOS update for Meteor Lake, which then resulted in it being significantly more performant and efficient at the different power levels that it was performing at, to the tune of a 12.26% improvement in Cinebench R23, showing that there was still some more power under the hood. Now, this likely isn't enough to make up for some of the CPU slowdown that it has against AMD's Ryzen 7s, but it is nice to see that there is still more to get out of it and I am excited to get my hands on a Meteor Lake laptop when those come around when I can finally buy one myself. And for yourself, you should check out today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Morgan & Morgan. You may know that we recently did our annual cannonball drive across the country and driving across the country isn't easy and it's sometimes made harder by other less skilled drivers. But what isn't hard is submitting a claim with America's largest injury law firm. When you submit a claim with Morgan & Morgan, you can do it from the comfort of your own home with only eight simple clicks. Then one of their skilled lawyers will review your case. Morgan & Morgan doesn't stop there when it comes to modernizing the injury law process. After your claim is submitted, you can handle everything right from your phone, signing and uploading your documents, submit case details, and even talk directly with your legal team throughout the entire duration of your case. After everything you've heard, contacting Morgan & Morgan after an accident should be a no-brainer, but in case you're still not convinced, here's a little more to sweeten the deal. Morgan & Morgan has no upfront costs. You only pay if they win for you. With no risk to you, it's just common sense to get Morgan & Morgan on your side to protect your rights and fight for the compensation you deserve. If you're ever injured in an accident, you can submit a claim at www.forthepeople.com forward slash UFD or by dialing pound law. That's pound 529 on your phone. You can find our link in the description below. A big thanks to Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring today's video. Well, it looks like we're going to have to use fewer clicks to get RGB working on PC because ASRock is the first motherboard manufacturer to announce that they officially support Windows 11's dynamic lighting setup. This is something that's baked into Windows 11 that allows you to customize all of your RGB software in one place, but the hardware manufacturers have to support it. So it's good to see that ASRock is doing that and they are rolling that out for their motherboards moving forward, which I think is just a good thing. We're gonna talk about this a little bit more, but hardware companies, typically don't make good software companies. And I'm glad when they recognize, hey, maybe this isn't our forte. Let's pass this off to companies like Microsoft who might have a slightly better time. But a lot of people are having a really bad time when it comes to data breaches and leaks that have been going around. We talked last week about the Insomniac leak of over 1.5 terabytes of data that was released to the public, including personal information. But now it looks like more companies are getting hit. Mint Mobile getting hit by a hacker saying that that they have customer information that has been revealed, such as the names, phone numbers, email addresses, plane descriptions, SIM and IMEI numbers, which can be used for SIM swap attacks, which is a bad thing. A lot of people posted about how they got this email from Mint Mobile being like, is this real? And Mint confirming over on Reddit that it is not a scam. Mint has been hacked and your information, unfortunately, is vulnerable. Ubisoft also reporting that they stopped a hack where hackers tried to get 900 gigabytes of data, including Rainbow Six Siege user data. And and that Ubisoft was able to see the breach 48 hours after it happened and they revoked the hackers access before they could take all of the data out. So it's not quite clear how much of the data the hacker got, but it looks like it's not as cohesive as it was with Insomniac. Additionally, there's a lot of reports coming out about the GTA 6 leaker who hacked Nvidia and did a whole bunch of stuff with GTA 6. And then under the court, he said that he was never gonna stop hacking. So he's now placed in a hospital prison sentence indefinitely until he agrees to reform his ways and not continue to hack moving forward. It's very strange times we're living in. Your data is precious. Keep hold of it, but also 
hold on to Reese because he's going to give you some deals. Yo, welcome back to EFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Hope you guys had a fantastic weekend. Lots of food, lots of friends, lots of family. And for those of you who have a little bit of Christmas spending money, uh, I've got some deals for you. Starting off with the Razer Orochi V2 wireless gaming mouse for only $34.99, making it $35 off. Then next, we have this ASRock B550 Phantom Gaming 4 ATX motherboard for only $73.59, making it $16.40 off. And then lastly, we have this amazing InnoCN 27 inch 4K 160 hertz mini LED gaming monitor going for only $599.99 with the included coupon code making it $200 off. And with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm handing off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thanks for those deals, Reese. But Sony's got a good deal for you, and that's they're not going to be taking away all of those TV shows and movies that you paid for after all. January 1st, 2024 was when Discovery and Sony were going to not have a licensing agreement anymore. So if you had purchased a show over on Sony's account that was a Discovery content piece, well, you purchased the license to that and the license was expiring. But it turns out Sony has renegotiated that and it's no longer expiring the end of the year. It's not clear when it's going to expire and Sony didn't really say anything about this whole debacle that's going on with people being up in arms about the whole thing. But likely this will happen again and this is going to continue to happen on major different platforms. I think this was probably one of the largest wake up calls that I've seen where people are like, oh man, Sony can take away the things we paid for. And that's how it is on nearly every platform that you are buying a digital good on. You are buying the license to use it, not necessarily the actual physical asset. A lot of people's response to that is this is why I buy physical. My personal response is this is why I don't hold anything precious and I'm okay of letting go of everything, even if I spent my hard earned money on it. If I enjoyed it at a period in time and I got my value extracted out of that thing, I'm not necessarily bothered if it is taken away. Obviously, this is not in every aspect of life, but I think with movies and TV shows, they don't make up a significant portion of my life that it bothers me that much. But also, I haven't purchased them for that reason. Like, I did not spend a dollar buying anything on Sony's uh, store or uh, really anywhere else. If I can't get it via a streaming platform or I can't easily access it, I don't watch it. I just move on with other things that I can have access to. Let me know your take on all of that down below in the comments. I understand that mine is not the popular regular opinion, but that's the one I hold for myself. It is not prescriptive for you, that's just me, how I operate, and how Microsoft's operating with mixed reality is that they aren't. They're done. They're pulling the plug on their mixed reality division, which was launched in 2017. They even launched their own Microsoft HoloLens headset, mixed reality being slightly different than VR because it's augmented reality. You have, you mix the virtual with the physical, and then you have the mixed. Even though Microsoft is shutting down the mixed VR system within their company, they are not necessarily ceasing production on the HoloLens too, which may come at a later date, but then there was also major contracts that Microsoft had with the U.S. government in order to use the HoloLens too, so it's not clear if they're going to shift over to some other software that's going to be used on that side. Very likely that could happen, but we'll have to wait and see what Microsoft is doing with the headset because they have not announced that yet. But what did get announced over the weekend is that there are going to be some big changes coming to video games, especially ones that are being distributed within China. There's new regulations coming into effect for online gaming and gambling regulations. Notably, this is going to impact some pretty popular games like Genshin Impact and other gotcha games because what it does is it makes it so that you cannot have rewards for logging into the game every day, rewards for spending on the game for the first time, or if they spend several times on the game consecutively. So essentially undermining how all of these games keep you coming back every single day. Like, this is something Something Reese did. Miss you, buddy. He was playing Genshin Impact on the iPad, on the cannonball, so that he could get his dailies in. He's not a child, right? So, like, he's allowed to do whatever he wants, but it also, like, the games are set up as mini Skinner boxes to get your brain to want to enjoy all of this goodness that you get from a reward for logging in every day. And if games can't do that, then it becomes a problem for the incentive to get you to spend money on them. So, it's not quite clear how big of an impact this is going to have, how 
how swiftly it's going to be rolled out into things like Genshin Impact, or if that's going to impact their Western releases like the ones that are served on US servers. And if you're just in China, it's going to be something completely different. But I'm curious, I want to know your take on this entire issue. What do you think of these daily incentives being removed from video games? You for it, you against it, sound off down below. But I teased a little bit earlier about how hardware companies probably shouldn't be making the software and GM is starting to see the fruits of that because one of the things GM has done with moving forward with their vehicles is that they're going to be using their own operating system for all the infotainment that's inside of the screen. Most people hate screens without physical buttons in cars anyways so we not going to go down that side of the rabbit hole but we've solved a lot of this with android auto and apple carplay just having the ability to have companies that are good at making software put software into the car gm has said they're not going to do that and it's now coming back to bite them in the butt because their chevy blazer ev has gone on sale and now it has a stop sale order because of just how bad the infotainment actually is despite press getting actual review units of the Blazer EV, the infotainment was completely unusable at certain sections, and some review drivers actually got stranded by the car because it broke down while it was charging. Now, Chevy says that we love our customers. We would never do anything bad towards them. And anybody could have seen this coming. GM, not necessarily known for making the highest quality software on the planet Earth, and then also just rejecting what is the most convenient and ubiquitous thing that every other car company is doing. I, I find it frustrating that this has happened, but it's again, like motherboard manufacturers making RGB software. It just was never a good time. But in case you want to have the good time of FSR3, you want that have that frame gen, you want to get that faster FPS, well, it turns out that there's a mod for that that can help you convert every single FSR2 game into an FSR3 frame gen game if you follow the instructions. Now, I will say that a lot of the reporting that I'm seeing here is talking about how this is a leaked mod by an actual person who developed this. And typically they have this available for pay over on their Patreon. You become one of their Patreon supporters and then you can get access to these mods that you can then use because they put in the hard work to do that. So I want to say this upfront, if you're considering using this mod, please make sure to actually support the content creator who created this for your enjoyment or potentially wait till somebody else creates one that is free if that's the way you want to do it. But you can find out the instructions on how this this works as well as all of the games that this applies to. If a game has FSR2, it can likely be used with this mod, and then it's also capable of having that frame gen turned on with both AMD and NVIDIA cards so that you're getting the best of both worlds every possible situation, and this seems to be a very good thing. So we'll leave a link for all of that down below in the comments. I am curious what you think about the whole idea behind paying for mods in the first place, especially with something that is simply a software tweak. Is this something you're for, against? I'm sure there's gonna be some hot and spicy opinions for me to respond to tomorrow on comment response. But let's get to the ones from Friday's episode. I rock saying, I think both are probably true. Intel did lack vision due to previous CEOs and Nvidia did get lucky. Bitcoin was a huge boon to Nvidia and though they had been working on AI, you never know how things will turn out. That said, I do think Pat wasn't really being fair to the work Nvidia did to get into a position they could capitalize on that luck. I think that is true on a lot of sides. I think the mining boom, Nvidia did make a lot of money off of that. There's no doubt, but I also know that they had a strong gaming portfolio, like the big mining boom that happened recently, RTX 30 series. Those things were really good for gaming and those were going to sell like hotcakes, irrespective of whether or not mining was there. So I think Nvidia definitely benefited, but they're not seeing the type of business shifting that we're seeing with AI. Crypto was a flash in the pan. AI is like revolutionizing how much money is possible to be made by this company. I do think Pat Gelsinger was a little dismissive in his comments on Nvidia. Like they did put in a lot of hard work. Yes, there obviously is luck and like unknowns and uncertainty whenever you make a strategic business decision. But the point is Nvidia could capitalize on all of this, not because they were lucky, but because they were actually prepared. They had been investing in all of this because they actually saw this future coming. And then when it happened, they were reaping the rewards of that. Lucky doesn't get you $11 billion. You having all of the infrastructure, the planning, the fab space, like that's a lot of hard work to get $11 billion. I can't, I can't make that much money. And I have been lucky on multiple occasions. It just typically isn't to that extreme. And we got Scarfo saying, Brett, I appreciate the explanation on AMD versus Intel 
with regards to OS scheduling. I've been on the fence between 14900K and 7950X 3D for this reason. They both have pros and cons, but helpful to understand what each brings to the table. Yeah, with OS scheduling, Intel's Thread Director, you don't have to do anything. It's automatically baked into Windows 10 and Windows 11 if you're on the latest updates. Windows 11 allegedly performs slightly better. I haven't seen enough evidence to believe that, but it just works straight out of the box. I use the 7950X 3D. I worked my butt off to try to figure out how am I supposed to properly park, unpark cores, make sure that things are working, especially because the fastest cores are the ones that have the 3D V cache and you can't be running all of them because there's like some confusion there. I think part of it, like when I released my review on the 7950X 3D, people were like, you're doing it wrong. And to some extent, right? Like maybe I was, which I worked my best to make sure I wasn't. And I also disclosed how much I had actually worked on it. But the point is, if you have a CPU that can just work straight out of the box and one that actually requires tinkering, there's a reason people buy consoles. That's all I'm going to say. And we got John Paulson saying, Brett, love the channel. I get you want to have multiple platforms for your business, but why do only the Twitch viewer get chances at giveaways? Continue the great work and hope your family has a wonderful holiday. Johnny Lee Rollins answering for me saying he's trying to grow that specific platform. His primary goal is gaining more followers on Twitch, not giving things away, which I guess is like partially true. I don't bring up our Twitch streams very often, even though we've been doing it literally nearly every single day in 2023. It's now been over a year since we've started and not stopped our stream on Twitch. But the real reason, if you scroll right on down, it's simply because, number one, of better bot integration. It's actually easier to track users on Twitch to make sure that, you know, people who are loyal audience members can actually get rewarded for their participation in the streams. But then also, how am I supposed to contact you? you if you went on YouTube. I can't DM you. I, all I can do is kind of announce it. I'd have to get your information off platform anyways, which can be solved in a multitude of different ways. But with Twitch, the best thing about it is that you have a username that I can DM you and then I can interface with you directly. If I say, hey, if you won this on YouTube and your username was John Paulson, send me an email and I get 50 emails from somebody alleging to be you, it makes it very difficult to understand who actually want. So that is the primary reason. It is simplicity of being able to do it. Twitch allows me to keep things easy and fair, and that's the way I, I'm going to do it. If YouTube rolls out better integration, they bring back user messaging. Maybe we could have a new conversation, but uh, because YouTube has removed some features, that's just the way it's going to be. But this is a great segue. We are giving away a whole host of items this Friday over on our Twitch stream. We have the drawing for our 14900K 4090 APNX C1 PC. We're also going to be drawing a winner for the Steam Deck OLED, the ROG Ally Z1, the $1,000 PC with the 4060 Ti that I'm staring at. And then we have a 49 inch Samsung super ultra wide OLED monitor that we're going to be drawing the winner for as well. All that's happening this coming Friday, December 29th to thank you guys for your support this year. And then we're going to close it off with Black Suite saying, will the 5700X 3D me Micro Center exclusives also? I have no idea. A lot of people were not happy about that. The reason I was given was that it's very limited quantity and that's why they've done it. But the 5600X 3D still seems to be in stock. So maybe it wasn't that limited or maybe it's not selling as well as uh, they had anticipated. It's hard to know. We'll, we'll find out if and when these things get announced. And if and when I'll be back here tomorrow for more Dahan as tech news. Why did I say it like that? I don't, my mouth just sometimes flubs words. See you tomorrow.